Uh, thank you for that kind introduction. Hi, everyone, and thank you for uh, staying behind for my presentation. Um, I'll be presenting some of our work um, in Qatari Lab at NC State, uh, focusing on um, elucidating some molecular mechanisms um, mediating a long-term survival of salmonella on low-moisture foods. Uh, the ability of salmonella to survive on diverse low-moisture food is well established. Um, however, the mechanisms that allow this organism to persist in, on low-moisture um, uh, foods are still uh, poorly understood. Uh, a few studies that have um, attempted to elucidate some of these mechanisms um, identified formation of thin ag aggregative fimbriae um, Potassium, trans uh, potassium transport uh, mechanisms as important uh, biological processes that allow salmonella to survive. However, all of these studies um, tested desiccation on abiotic surfaces such as um, plastics and stainless steel uh, to simulate the low uh, water activity levels in low moisture foods. So therefore, by design, some of the mechanisms that may be specific to survival on low moisture foods uh, may be, have been excluded in these studies. And that actually inform the objectives of this uh, current study, which are number one, to analyze the transcription profiles of salmonella, contaminating low moisture food, and also to identify some important uh, genetic determinants that may be essential for uh, the survival. We hypothesize the genes that are important uh, for the survival of salmonella will be differentially expressed um, on this product, and also that uh, mutants that are lacking certain genes that are important for survival will exhibit um, impaired survival. And we believe that this study um, is, is significant, um, not just because the findings will contribute to our knowledge base on how salmonella survive on low moisture foods, but also it could actually um, aid development of improved strategies to control salmonella contaminating low moisture foods. We employed two different um, approaches. Uh, the first, actually, as I mentioned earlier, uh, focused on transcriptome analysis of salmonella. Um, on these three, uh, product, uh, um, initial pistachios, dried apples, and conflicts. And for these, we uh, used um, PT30, enteritides, salmonella enteritides, PT30, uh, which was involved in the 2005 almond outbreaks. And the second approach um, actually employed um, negative selection of three different mutual libraries of salmonella, uh, followed by transposon insertion site sequencing to analyze uh, what genes are impaired uh, in the uh, selected libraries. And for the second study, we only used initial pistachios as a model of most of foods. Uh, very briefly for the transcriptome study, um, individual fragments of the low moisture foods were uh, inoculated with an uh, organism and then allowed to dry until the water activity approximated that of uninoculated products. And then uh, the product was stored and periodically salmonella, the population of salmonella on the products were enumerated. And also we extracted um, RNA at three hours, one week, uh, five and 12 weeks. And then the RNA samples were uh, ribo depleted and sequenced uh, to obtain about 9 to 10 million reads per sample. For the RNA-seq um, data analysis, we used uh, the CLC genomics workbench. And also do, we also did uh, 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 a parallel um, analysis using Bioconductor HR. Uh, the reads were mapped to the reference genome um, salmonella enteritides P125109, uh, which is highly characterized and also available in uh, several databases that we used for downstream analysis. And uh, we compared the gene expression levels in salmonella contaminating this product at different times to um, the inoculum suspension to identify genes that may have been, uh, that may be uh, differentially expressed. We also performed some gene, uh, gene ontology and uh, functional uh, classification and en uh, enrichment classification to identify uh, some bi biological processes and uh, molecular functions uh, that are enriched in salmonella under this condition. Um, after inoculation of our product, we inoculated, the product were inoculated about 9.2 uh, log CFU per gram. Uh, we actually employed this high inoculum, inoculum level because we wanted to monitor um, RNA. Uh, we want to, wanted to monitor transcriptome over time, so we wanted to make sure we have sufficient cells uh, to obtain uh, uh, sufficient um, RNA concentration for our uh, RNA sequencing. But what we notice here for um, all the products after three hours, the reduction in population was very minimal. However, for, um, for conflicts and, and, pist and, and, um, and pistachios, we noticed a progressive decline in the population of salmonella up to about two log after 110 days. But what we also know what noticed was for apple, we noticed a very uh, drastic decline in population. And as I said, three days, the population was below the detection limit or the limit of detection of 10 uh, CFU per, per fragment. 
So we performed a higher resolution uh, time just to assessment, uh, survival assessment, to see when the population actually uh, became unculturable. And that actually uh, happened about 43 days. So after 43 days, we could not recover salmonella contaminating low I mean, dried apples. However, we continued to recover um, RNA I mean, salmonella transcripts from this apple several weeks after which salmonella became unculturable, actually up to about uh, eight weeks. And considering the relatively short um, uh, half-life for uh, bacterial mRNA, we were curious to see indeed if the cells were still present on the surfaces of apple. So we performed, so we performed confocal microscopy to uh, directly visualize the cells contaminating the surface of um, uh, uh, the surfaces of, of dried apples inoculated. The first panel um, that we are seeing here it's uninoculated apples. So after staining with a cytonine, which is a green fluorescent um, nucleic acid stain, and also a probidum iodide. So in principle, cells that are still viable and are still um, alive would fluoresce green, while cells that are dead will fluoresce um, red. So the first panel A is uh, showing uh, uninoculated apple. So we didn't see because the background actually was below detection limit um, before inoculation. So we're not expecting to see any bacterial cells. But if you look at the panel B, that is showing um, after three hours of drying, and the population, which of course we were able to uh, determine by enumeration on agar plate, was around 9.1 log CFU per fragment. And um, the percentage, so after, um, after we, uh, uh, we, we, we got the images, after image acquisition uh, from confocal microscopy, we further processed the images using image A to count the number of cells in a split channel. So what I'm showing here is a, a, a channel combined together, so the life and the dead channel combined together overlaid. But we actually uh, enumerated the cells from individual channels to compute the uh, proportion of, vi of viable cells in the population. So after three hours, about 99.1% of the cells present were viable. After um, the panel C is showing um, the, the image after 50 uh, days of storage at 25 degrees Celsius. Um, or, and at this time, Salmonella did not fi uh, form colonies on agar plate. So we um, observed that about 68% of the cells that were still present on the surfaces of um, apple fragments were, uh, were still viable, although they failed to form colonies on, on agar plates. And we performed quantitation uh, with uh, RT-PCR just to see the total number of cells, both live and dead, that were still present on the surfaces of the apple. And, and then uh, we estimated the number of cells that were still viable, although not forming uh, colonies. And that uh, turned out to be about 10 to 8 uh, cells were still present on individual fragments, and they were still viable. We monitored the proportion of the viable cells over time, and um, the panel we can see uh, 25 degrees uh, Celsius of storage. After 110 days, the percentage of the viable cells actually reduced. And even for the reduction, after 537 days, only about 14% of the cells were viable. But mind you, after 43 days, we could not plate, we could not recover the cells on agar plate. So uh, this, uh, this particular physiological state is generally termed a viable but not culturable state, uh, which is a state at which bacteria fail to grow. Uh, on media or under laboratory conditions, uh, although they were still alive. And these have serious implications, or potentially serious implications for food safety, because classical uh, culture-based uh, culture uh, microbiological methods may not be able to detect salmonella uh, that are in this state, which are still contaminating the food. And that, have, uh, that may have impact on the efficacy of our food safety uh, validation systems, and also the risk assessments of microbiological hazards associated with salmonella contaminating low moisture foods. And also, uh, there's a growing body of evidence actually suggesting that under favorable conditions, that bacteria that are in this state can actually resume uh, the normal vegetative uh, uh, metabolic processes and become culturable. And also, um, there, there are, um, yeah, there's also there are reports that state of bacteria that are in the VBS state do exhibit higher tolerance to antimicrobial um, uh, 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 agents and, and sanitizing agents. In terms of um, transcriptome, uh, we noticed a very um, quick transcriptional response of salmonella to desiccation. So after three hours, about 120 genes um, on, on dried apples were differentially expressed. Uh, what I would like to call your attention to, though, is that after one week, and, um, the, 
the transcriptome profile seems to be stable. So the transcriptome that we observe um, after one week, five weeks, and 12 weeks kind of clustered together. So they were similar compared to um, after three weeks. And we observed the same, uh, the same observation for the other products. So for, uh, um, for conflicts, we had the same, although for, these, for conflicts and pistachios, uh, more genes were induced after three hours but we still uh, observe that stability after one week. So the number of genes that were differentially expressed, or at least that were present at the time, after one week, five weeks and 12 weeks, were relatively comparable. And this is showing, again, as I mentioned, for pistachios. Also, we wanted to compare um, how the differentially expressed genes compare among different uh, products at different times. So after three hours, the first um, Venn diagram is showing uh, so we have pistachios, conflicts, and apple. So we have 51 genes were differentially, dif 51 differentially expressed genes were common to all the products. But we observe very um, product-specific also induction or uh, differential expression of genes. Also, what note uh, 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 I would like to mention here that pistachios and conflicts, um, salmonella contaminating pistachios and conflicts, actually do share a lot of of, of mechanism or Indu gene inductions, and, and that actually was also observed for all the time. So we have more similarities between pistachios and conflicts, and very different from dried apples. Um, so we were interested to see um, the biological relevance or the, the functions of these genes that were differentially expressed. Uh, these are common to all um, the products, so pistachios, conflicts, and, and, and dried apples. We found some genes that were involved in, um, in protein. Um, uh, 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 we found uh, molecular chaperones that are involved in protein folding and, and recycling. And also, we also found a lot of um, RNA helicases, which have been uh, characterized to be induced for RNA degradation. And then we, have, we found some transporters. Uh, we also found that so all these are upregulated. And also, I will mention this later on in my presentation. We found that. Uh, um, NADH um, dehydrogenase transcription re uh, repressor was also highly induced. And this actually is involved in um, ATP derivation, of course, from uh, electro chain transport chain. We found some genes that were relevant to uh, virulence, uh, like MVPT, which is also part of the T, it's a, a type 2 um, toxin antitoxin system, uh, first identified in the, big, uh, in the large um, uh, Shigella plasmid, which also was found to be important for uh, virulence. And these um, were found to be downregulated in salmonella contaminating all the products. So we have um, methyl-citrate cycle, uh, motility, and electron transport chain. Um, we, do we know that these um, methyl-citrate cycle and electron transport chain indeed do have something in common, and that is ATP derivation, right, from acetyl-CoA and other short-chain uh, uh, short fatty acids. And then we have motility also downregulated. So when we speculate based on these, uh, at least the findings that we have, it suggests that ATP derivation from uh, the conversion of short-chain fatty acids were actually downregulated in salmonella, contaminated low-moisture foods. And what I'm not showing here, actually, um, yes, yeah, so uh, what I'm not showing here is that also 17%, 17 to 21% of all this protein actually have ATP binding capacities. So it suggests to us that there's a metabolism, a metabolism shift in salmonella contaminated low moisture foods from energy production, at least through the pathways that we identified, to actually efficiently using the ATP that already present in the, in the system while converting the short chain fatty acids and acetylcholine into synthesis of uh, aromatic molecular co uh, compounds, which probably may serve as um, osmoprotectant to increase the uh, uh, solute concentration in the cytoplasm in order to balance the osmolarity um, uh, gradient, uh, pardon me. So these were identified in only in pistachios contaminating conflicts and um, apple, I mean, and, and pistachios, but not in apples. And actually some of these have already been described uh, in, in previous studies. So we found uh, trehev, which actually is involved in the metabolism of uh, um, biosynthesis of trialos, which is an osmoprotectant, and also some other genes that were um, have been reported before. Indeed, also um, highlighting the differences or these uh, uh, product-specific responses of salmonella to uh, different low moisture foods. So we found also um, a lot of uh, non-coding RNA, um, some of which have been implicated in um, 
virulent like HFQ. And um, also we found the, uh, an upregulation in some genes, I mean induction of some genes that are involved in RNA uh, degradation and recycling. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, motility, which of course had been hypothesized to be due to energy con uh, conservation. So energy that would be used instead of moving, I mean, for, to synthesize a flagella and uh, for motility were downregulated. So it has a lot of energy con uh, conservation in salmonella contaminating uh, the food. So important findings um, for this first study is that indeed uh, salmonella can become non-culturable um, after a while on certain uh, low moisture foods. And also we identified some features, some uh, genes that were uh, differentially expressed in all the products and also some very um, uh, uh, specific uh, uh, processes also that were identified. And the findings suggest that the transcriptional responses of salmonella was very quick, was very rapid. So after three hours, we saw a lot of, of changes and are very stable. And it also suggests that actually the mechanisms that salmonella employ to survive for a very long time are actually induced very early uh, when exposed to uh, this uh, stressful condition. So the second method um, involved a negative selection of uh, three different mutant libraries. Uh, the libraries were constructed from uh, Typhimerium, um, Enteritides, and uh, Newport, and we used Insure Pistachios as a model uh, low moisture foods. So very briefly, um, Insure Pistachios uh, were inoculated with the libraries, individual libraries, and then um, dried until the water activity uh, uh, approximated that of um, uninoculated uh, product and then the, D the genomic DNA of salmonella contaminating the product at different times were uh, extracted. So we extracted the DNA at uh, time zero, which is our input, uh, after drying for 24 hours and then during, st after, during storage for 120 hours. So we, uh, the DNA libraries uh, were prepared and then sequenced to identify the transposition insertion site. And we compute, I mean, we, we, we compared the abundance of insertion sites at time zero versus 24, that is the input versus after a drying, and also 24 hours to 120 days. And we, uh, we, we computed the relative abundance of these genes uh, as log two fold change, and uh, statistically we combined, uh, I mean, we compared these uh, uh, results. So this curve is showing the survival of both the wild type and the mutant libraries of the strains that we, uh, that we, that we tested. Um, Newport was, dis was discontinued after 30 days because uh, the population dropped below our target population, which is about um, a six log. Uh, the inoculation method here is quite different from the first one. The first we use uh, agar group plates, but because we are dealing with a mutant pool here, so the uh, culture were, were grown in, in broth. And here I'm showing uh, some genes that were uh, on the, that, were, that, were, that have higher or lower relative abundance. So in principle, genes that are, in, that are important for desiccation will be other represent, underrepresented, that is the, low, uh, the uh, relative abundance will be lower at 24 hours as compared to time zero because then they, they've, because they, the library has been subjected to uh, negative selection. So we compare these and um, genes that are um, essential or that are uh, essential for um, that genes, which del deletion of genes that, genes that show higher relative abundance indicates that actually the, de the, the, the gene is not involved in, in survival, actually the deletion of the gene enhanced survival. So we found um, 51 genes after this is enteritis uh, time zero compared to 24 hours and 24 hours compared to 20, uh, 120 days. And this is Newport um, and um, enteritis, I mean typhimerium. And then we compared the distribution of the, of the insertion sites that were significantly, um, uh, that, that had significant low, uh, lower relative abundance at time, zero, time 24 compared to time zero. So we have a lot of um, similarities um, of the insertion site, they share a lot of similarities among the different strains, and also at 120 days. And so we observed a common and strain specific um, insertion sites that were, uh, 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 that, are, uh, that had less uh, relative abundance. And also, most of the genes that, we, that have low relative abundance also were uh, transcriptionally induced in the first study that we did. So we had a lot of uh, similarities. And then um, 
some of these genes um, we tested, uh, we had deletion mutants of some of the genes that were both induced under, in our transcriptome studies and also that were uh, negatively selected in the second study, and we tested them. An example of which is um, LRH, which, I mean, uh, LRH, RFBD, uh, all of these genes generally were um, induced in all, uh, salmonella contaminating all the low moisture foods. And what we found actually is that um, a lot of these genes actually were important. So after about uh, 60 days, we started seeing a separation. And after about 110 days, um, the log reductions for the mutants were significantly um, higher than that of the wild type. Uh, however, there was an aberration because our MDOG, which of course was induced, although induced in salmonella, actually was found to be um, the survival was, 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 didn't show any phenotype, so the survival was very comparable to that of the wild type, suggesting that although it was induced in the transcription studies, it wasn't actually um, essential. So important findings here is that um, NADH-mediated uh, electron transport chain, which of course is coupled to uh, ATP production, uh, motili uh, uh, motility and TCA cycle, uh, were downregulated in salmonella, contaminating low moisture foods. And that uh, because we saw a lot of genes that are involved in RNA damage, uh, 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 RNA uh, uh, that are involved in the repair of uh, uh, damaged DNA and also starvation, we hypothesized that salmonella contaminating low moisture foods indeed experience starvation and extensive DNA damage. And also, um, transcriptome signatures suggest to us that salmonella remain metabolically active because not only are we seeing differences in induced genes, and but also. We also see differences even in selection. And also, um, it's, it highlights the importance of non-coding RNA that it may be playing import, an important role in survival of low moisture foods. Um, I would like to acknowledge um, my advisor, Dr. Sophia Cathario, uh, Dr. Jeff, um, and also all these other contributors for strange uh, guidance and insights. And that's the conclusion of my presentation. Thank you. So you're seeing damage, right, with the desiccation, um, but they're still metabolically active. So is there anything that you've seen that says that they are less virulent in any way, or? Um, in terms of the genes, we, we saw a lot of uh, virulent genes where they were upregulated. Uh, but we also did some uh, preliminary uh, as, uh, virulence assessments using the Galerial Infection Model, um, which I'm not showing here. There's evidence of, of, of virulence. Uh, some of the larvae were infected, but we have not, we are still looking into this. So we cannot definitely uh, 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 conclusively say that the virulence or, the, you know, or less virulent. But indeed, yeah, even from dried apples that did not have um, culturable salmonella, there was still virulence in Galeria Moda. Thank you. <laughs> 